start going down the rabbit hole and <laughs> talking about something that has absolutely nothing to do with the seminar. And so I'm going to keep, uh, follow along here. So good morning and welcome to most common homeowner scams and how to avoid them. Uh, before we get started, the restrooms are out right outside the door to the right where you came in. And on your table, you'll find, find some papers. The first one says welcome, and here's a good place to jot down questions or notes. We are going to have a Q&A period after the seminar, and so it's a good idea to write down your questions during the seminar, and during that period, you can go ahead and ask them to the panelists. Uh, we also have a seminar action item sheet, which is just a few items to spur you, uh, jog your memory on things you might want to remember after you leave today. And then lastly, but very importantly, we have an evaluation form, which we very much would appreciate that you fill out. And to make it a little more interesting, anyone who fills <coughs> out and turns in their evaluation sheet will be eligible for a $25 cash drawing. So we don't mind bribing people. <laughs> we like the evaluation sheets because it helps us to continually improve our seminars. And it's very important to us that we give you the best that we can possibly give. So here's an overview, of, an overview of what to expect. We have three panelists who are experts who will be speaking today, and I'll be asking them prepared questions. When we're finished, we'll open it up for questions that you may have, and then we'll finish no later than 11.30 or earlier if we run out of questions. After we conclude the seminar, we will be available to answer any questions you have that may be of a more personal nature or to set up a personal consultation with you. So my name is Nancy Pewter, and I will be your host today. For those of you who don't know me already, I am a real estate broker with Keller Williams Realty here in Pismo Beach, and also the founder of Seacoast Seniors. We're excited to bring the event to you today because what you might not realize is a lot of people that we visit are concerned about being victimized in their own home. And so we want to equip you today so that when you leave, you feel empowered and have the most current information available <coughs> to stay safe. The truth is, is that anybody is susceptible to a scam. Uh, scams aren't always specific to gender or age. And you know, uh, how many would agree that things have just changed? Who remembers as kids we used to go door to door to sell candy and people actually opened up the door with a smile? Mm -hmm. And does anyone remember the Fuller Brush Man? Oh, yeah. <laughs> how about Deep Dong Avon Calling? <laughs> or uh, how about the Hoover vacuum cleaner guy who would come in and dump a bunch of dirt on your carpet? <laughs> Uh, my mom, a funny story, my mom used to see the Fuller Brush Man. For some reason, she couldn't stand Fuller Brush. And you didn't never ask my mom why about these things. And she'd see the Fuller Brush Man coming down the street. And all of us kids would have to hide. We'd have to stay quiet and, make and pretend that we weren't home until he stopped knocking and walked away. So that was our routine. And he came by once a month. And it was actually kind of fun. So today, I think we would all agree that criminals have become so savvy and sophisticated that it's kind of scary. And they've also developed an ability to be able to hide. And it used to be that they, you would, they would almost have to look you in the eye to commit their crime. And nowadays, they hide between, behind the telephone and the computer screen, and they do it with a level of anonymity that uh, is hard to detect. So I have some wonderful people here today who um, are going to help you identify and avoid scams, and they're going to be talking about these things. So by, by the time you leave today, you'll be able to outsmart the scammers, okay? All right, so do me a favor and turn to your neighbor. It's coming. 
Turn to your neighbor and say, you are going to learn something today. <laughs> <laughs> now turn, turn back to them again and say, it's about time. <laughs> okay, let's begin. We're going to start by asking the panelists to introduce themselves, share a little bit about who they are, who they're affiliated with, and then we're going to dive into how to avoid being scammed. So Anthony, would you like to start? Sure. I'm Anthony Hernandez. I'm a, the detective sergeant with Pismo Beach Police Department. I've been a police officer for almost 17 years. Uh, 10 of those years were in Bakersfield with the police department there. Uh, newly assigned to our detective bureau, and for the last six and a half years, I've been on our patrol uh, staff. Great. My name is Angela Viles. I'm with the District Attorney's Victim Witness. I'm a victim advocate. I have been with the County of San Luis Obispo for uh, almost 19 years. I have been with the District Attorney's Office for, I, I guess, almost 16 years of that. Uh, I was a claim specialist with our Victim Compensation Board, and I have been assigned to our Elder Independent Adult caseload, uh, I think for 12, about 12 of those years. So I'm pretty familiar with individuals over the age of 65 or, or persons with uh, physical or mental limitations that restrict their abilities to protect themselves at some points. Okay. Stephanie Barclay, I'm the legal director for San Luis Obispo Legal Assistance Foundation. We're a nonprofit um, serving San Luis Obispo County, and our biggest program is Senior Legal Services. Um, and, and through that program, we provide free legal assistance to seniors, um, which is only age 60 and up in San Luis Obispo County. Um, and I have been there for the last six and a half years. I've been a lawyer about 23 years. Before that, I was, um, I've done all sorts of, all sorts of other things. But um, yeah, that's my organization. Thank you. So Anthony, what do you feel is the most important thing that we need to talk about today? I think for, from my perspective, it's the telephone scams. The fundraisers that people call you about, wanting you to donate money to law enforcement or other first responder groups um, that are probably the biggest one that I've seen. Okay. You know, I, um, I had a really hard time with that question because there are so many scams out there and there's so much information um, that I personally want to get out to everyone so that you can share it with any individuals that you might know that are maybe not out um, out about as often they're homebound or um, they just they don't have the ability to get the information so I think I want to talk about uh, some of the more current scams that we see come through our office like the grandparent scam what and hopefully the majority of you out there know about that scam already but kind of what's happening with that scam to make it um, people fall, fall victim to it even more often at this point. Um, I wanna talk about the IRS scams, some of the scams that are out there that um, are very misleading. And then just a few things that individuals can do to protect themselves that we, um, tips that we like to share. And I do have a handout at the end if anyone would like it. Great. Tiffany, what do you feel we need to talk about? Today? Well, I, those are, I'm, I'm glad my colleagues are here to talk about the scams because they're extremely prevalent and important. Um, what comes through our door more often though is um, family members and close friends who are taking advantage of um, an elderly loved one. So that's kind of going to be what my emphasis is on because I think that people, um, don't expect that to happen to them or in their families and then circumstances change and so just kind of being aware of that as well. Yeah, I think that's great because none of us want to believe that anyone in our family would rip us off, but what is it, number like 86% <coughs> of the elder abuse? Most of the elder abuse, yeah, is family members and mm -hmm. definitely that's what we see in, in our office. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Family and caregivers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. People uh -huh. you know, yeah. So Anthony, at what point do you get involved? So 
when you find, when you realize you become a victim of a scam, um, usually it's not during the call. It's maybe days later uh, where you realize that you know more money has actually come out of your account. Um, then that's when law enforcement actually gets the phone call and says, "Hey, I've lost more money," or you know, that's when we become involved. Is after somebody has actually lost money, given away their information, has now become a victim of identity theft, and chances are that's days, if not weeks after that phone call took place. And what would be some ways to avoid that from happening? So for me personally, um, I found, found three questions that I ask every person that calls me for a charitable donation. And that could be law enforcement, fire, EMS, um, could be, you know, who doesn't want to give money to first responders, you know, for, you know, uh, fallen officers or fallen firefighters or child advocacy groups. Um, one of the things that I ask them for is they have my name, I ask them their name. You know, most of these people, they're trying to get you to give up your information. Ask them questions, ask them their name, ask them for a phone number that you can call them back at so that, that way you can do your own research. Um, don't make it easy for them, make it a little bit harder. <clears throat> a lot of times they don't want to give you their information, their, their name. Ask them for their, the company they work for and their employee ID number. Those are, those are some good questions to ask them. It's also a deterrent for them too, because if you're starting to ask them questions and they're a scam, they don't want to give that information up. The third question I always ask them, and I've had tremendous success with this, because I get those calls just like everybody else. The third question I ask is, what is your federal tax ID number or employee identification number? So what happens is, is any nonprofit charitable organization, in order to um, be approved for federal tax um, exemption status, they have to have that number. It's a requirement just to determine eligibility. <laughs> Chances are when you ask them that question, they'll hang up. Good, wow, that's good. Some are good though, they make it up. Yeah, yeah some, are, some are very good. <laughs> yeah. You can then research it. Someone was telling me that, um, that if you call back the number mm -hmm. and they answer right away, that's kind of an indication that it would be a scam. Because usually, if it's if you call back and you're put on hold forever, it's probably the real deal. <laughs> right. So a lot of times, what what will happen is they don't have they spoof a number, which means that they the caller on the caller ID the number that shows up is an 800 number or an 888 number that corresponds to somebody else, a legitimate company. And it's kind of how they hide their identity. Um, so don't be misled by what's on your caller ID, okay? So if you do get a phone number for them, or if they don't want to give one, or there isn't one to call back, have them call you back at a later time. That way it gives you the time to do your own research and validate the fact that they're a legitimate company. If they're legitimate, they don't have a problem calling you back at a better time because they, they want to call you. Just a quick question. When you were talking about the federal ID tax number, mm -hmm. um, and it, I can see where it would be easy for somebody to just roll off some number and you wouldn't know because I wouldn't have the faintest idea. Right. But it, as an example, like a social security number is usually some type of nine digit number. Right. So, so is there a. <clears throat> Is there, I, you know, I don't know what a federal ID tax number is, but does it fit that kind of, is it a? Let me just repeat the question. So Mike is asking, um, how do you know that the federal, what if they just rattle off a number? How do you know that it's a federal ID number or is it just something that they made up? Yeah. And chances are, if, if they're familiar with that type of uh, question, um, they'll be able to rattle off a, a, a number. Um, pretty easily. And what it is, is usually the federal tax ID numbers start with like a 95 or a 99 or something like that. Um, and then it has like a, if they tell you there's a dash after the first two digits, that's usually an indication that that's probably good, but you still want to do your due diligence and make sure and, and verify it. And then it's followed by an additional, I think it's six numbers. So it's not the same. It's seven. Is it seven? seven. So mine's okay. two digits dash and then seven numbers. Seven numbers. Still nine digits. Yeah. Okay. I, I would think the safest bet would be not to make donations over the phone, don't yeah. you think? I mean, mm -hmm. because it's it's easy for them to avoid all, you know, to, mm -hmm. to look legitimate. 
I had somebody once I was trying to help confirm it was a scam and you know they were calling from a like a Washington DC phone mm -hmm. number claiming to be an agency it sounded legit it really did they left a phone number I could call back at um, but then when I you know googled and actually looked up the actual agency it was a little different the phone number was different mm -hmm. um, but it, it took some investigating to figure out and this day and age we can all almost Google information or have a friend or family member look into that information for us. But a lot of my clients don't have internet access. That's why it's a um, friend or family yeah. member. <laughs> okay, so they'll call us or they'll call they'll call you guys. Call me. Um call somebody with yeah. the right people. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the truth of the matter is is that this is more educational, but I agree with um, Stephanie that the best practice is never give your personal identification information over the phone to anybody name birthday if they already have your phone number they have an address they might have your name anybody's information is already accessible online just public records request um, information is available online so they can get that already don't verify anything don't verify birthdays don't verify credit card numbers don't give any information out on the phone that is going to be your best bet i have a question not too long ago, a gentleman called, they said they were from the police department and they asked for a donation. And I said, well, which one is it? They said, well, it's a San Luis Obispo. So I said, well, and then he said, how much do you want to donate? I said, well, $35. And the lady got on the phone and she said, what is your good credit card number? I said, you must be kidding and hung up. <laughs> good job. I don't, give it over, I don't give it over the telephone, for my credit. You know? Did everyone hear that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, one, one thing I will touch, touch on since you brought it up, when it comes to law enforcement, um, law enforcement, fire, we do not call people for donations. We, we, that is not something that we do wow. ever. We won't call you. What about by mail? If you we, you mail? might, you might receive a mailer in the, you know, uh, like a postcard <laughs> style mailer asking for donations. Feel free to call us. You know, we will, that's pretty much the, the main way that law enforcement fire will, will ask for donations. They'll send out mailers. Um, they'll give you a legitimate address for the local agency, whether it be the police department or a uh, fire department. They will give you that information. And then if, you are su if you're still suspect of, you know, if it's legitimate, call your local police department. I, I get a lot of uh, letters now from police departments or veterans department for all, from all across the country. Mm -hmm. And yeah. would, you, would you ignore those or what would you do? Feel free to ignore them. <laughs> feel, I, you feel free to ignore them. But if it's something that you're interested in and you feel wholeheartedly about wanting to benefit or uh, to provide something or donate to something, call them first. Make sure that that is a legitimate request for donations. Because I would say once you're on a list, they do have lists, they sell those lists you're going to get additional mailers you're going to get the publications and if one four person five is in. a week yeah. yeah so i would i would ignore those if you feel strongly like he said do some investigation on your own contact that agency directly mm -hmm. look it up in the phone book google it get a, a legitimate number and follow up with them to find out if it yeah. if that's a legitimate request or not the other thing is along those lines um legitimate and illegitimate people and businesses can buy lists of um, somebody who's died recently or you know, somebody who's going through a divorce and then they can target you know those people and get them um, when they're really vulnerable about issues that might really pull at their heartstrings so um, as sad as that is you know that that's what's going on so um, Angela yes um, let's try to hold our questions till the end okay, okay. I've just jot them down on your paper because uh, we want to make sure that we stay on point so um, at what point do you get involved and what and what are some more tips so that is an interesting question we get involved actually from crime reports that are submitted by our local agencies so anytime a crime victim is listed or they're not a copy of the report that, that they write up is going to be submitted to the district attorney's office. When a victim is listed, it's going to go to an advocate and to a filing DA for potential filing. We reach out as early as we possibly can. 
when there's when there's any kind of loss for a victim um, and we start working with them right away it's a little more difficult when it is a scam situation because many times it's an unknown suspect because a lot of these um, situations are occurring outside of the United States we will still request those crime reports myself and the three advocates that I work with because we can reach out to individuals in our community kind of try to talk to them we get a lot of scams that are foreign lottery scams and um, we'll talk a little more about that in a few minutes but we want to reach out to individuals and let them know you're not going to win a foreign lottery stop giving the money and uh, so we do a little more community outreach we also um, myself and my my three co-workers we go out into the community so about 50% of what we do is to going to meet with community agencies um, we're on quite a few committees but we also go out and do presentations so if you are living in a senior community or you're living in a community where you're seeing a higher number of scams or you're seeing uh, people that are maybe a little more vulnerable we can go out and we can do presentations directly about scams kind of about what we do and what we're seeing how to protect yourself and and how to protect your loved ones so i hope that kind of answers yes the question thank you so at what point do you get involved so we get Stephanie? involved um when there's a senior who wants our legal help um Unlike law enforcement, like if you're a concerned neighbor or you want to report suspected abuse, you know, you can call law enforcement. Um, we don't have any powers or badges to just go investigate what's going on in the community. We need to have a client, so we need to have a senior who's been scammed or is being abused by a family member or is having a legal problem that they want help with. I mean, that's also a big part of it because sometimes you may be concerned about a family member or something, but that person who's the victim doesn't want help. Um, and in that case, we, we have to have, <clears throat> have contact with a client. And so that's one of our first things is establish who is calling because we don't get involved if it's like an adult kid who's upset with the other adult kid and wants the parent to get help. We need to talk to the parent. We need to make sure that that's what they want and then that's what we get involved. And we also get um, a lot of referrals from local agencies, adult protective services and um, victim witness um, and the hospice and all the agencies, the courts, but, but we need to have, we need to have a client who wants to, who wants our help. Yeah. And you are a great resource, no, wonderful you. resource. <laughs> All right, Anthony, so what would you say are the most popular scams right now? And feel free to re, you know, share any recent experiences that you've had. Um, so for me, what I, what I see are a lot of times like the fundraiser scams, the donations, the charitable um, ones on the, on the, by telephone. Um, here locally, we always have calls for the door to door the door to door salesman Pismo Beach has a municipal code ordinance about door to door sales they have to have a business license in order to do that um, so we get calls all all the you know, that she bought for $5000 <laughs> on this payment plan um, we've been able to get them out of those contracts so try i mean it's luckily i'm glad we didn't have to like file a lawsuit cuz it would have been a, a pain but um, with an attorney um, involved and sending letters and getting on them, they'll usually like back off. Um, but in terms of what we're seeing the most of, like I said, is um, people who um, haven't really planned for um, the stage of their life and they're in a house um, and maybe that's the only asset they own and it's bigger than they need and the mortgage payments are higher than they can afford or something like that and and none of these people ever said oh yeah i knew i suspected you know my family member would do this it it always things change in life and um so it's not that i'm saying anyone in this room has evil kids but um sometimes it's you know their spouse um this this happened you know it's their spouse is sick and dying and the one of the kids moves in 
and is helping with end of life and then feels a little more entitled than the other kids. And so then next thing you know, they're on the deed because it's gonna be less expensive than going through probate. So we'll just be, you know, we'll put you on the deed to become a joint owner, which by the way, then you can't just take them off if you change your mind. Um, and then things change and the other kid comes into their life and then the kid who's mad at that kid is then trying to evict the parent. Um, that sort of thing, and that's where we come in. We do not get involved in the kids, I call them kids, you know, but they're adults, <coughs> fighting with each other over what's best for mom and dad or where their money should go. That, we're like, figure that out yourselves or hire lawyers, but um, we will try to pr help protect the, the elderly person and keep them in the house that they, that they intended to be in. That's really good. Yeah, mm. that's really good. Angela, tell us a little bit about the kidnapping scam. So I think, how many people here have heard about the grandparent scam? Mm -hmm. I hope the majority of you. <laughs> so <coughs> grandparents, Why don't you run through that real quick. I, I, yep. <coughs> so <laughs> what, what happens is your phone rings. Typically it's very early in the morning, late at night, strange hours that you're not expecting a call. They say, grandma, grandma, it's me, I have trouble. I had a case where the gentleman said, Grandma, it's me. She said, who is this? And he said, it's, Grandma, it's your favorite. It's your, you, I can't believe you don't know it's me, Grandma, I'm scared. And she said, Timmy, is that you? At that point, they have the name. Yeah, it's me, Timmy. Hold on, Grandma, I'm in trouble. I, I went to Mexico for the weekend. I was in an accident. At that point, a really fast talking attorney picks up the phone. They start talking. They say, your grandson's in a lot of trouble. He had an accident, but I know people. This is a really rough jail. I know people, I can get them off. I just need you to send me some money, $3,000. Get me $3,000 as quickly as you possibly can. Grandma runs either to the bank, Western Union, money cards, wherever she can to get this money to the attorney. Next thing she knows, the phone rings again. They say, hey, your grandson's in a lot more trouble. The person that he hit died. We need some more money to, to help him out. Grandma runs to the store. The woman I was working with ran to the store, sent more money, and then she thought, you know, it's four hours later. Timmy hasn't called to say he's okay. What's going on? She calls her daughter, and her daughter says, Mom, I don't know what you're talking about. Timmy's right here at the baseball game with me. That was never a scam. The money is gone. Grandma's out that money. We've been... I don't know for how many years going around sharing this because it was so prevalent we had people losing a lot of money to the scam. We felt like we had a pretty good hold on it. We were hearing from a lot of individuals that they didn't fall victim. I hung up on them. I didn't send the money. I called my grandchild to make sure they were okay. Yesterday while I was at a senior event in Arroyo Grande, I was approached by a young woman that said her grandmother had been victimized by this scam. They contacted her they, and said, Grandma, it's me. It was actually the great-grandson, so she's not as familiar with his voice. Grandma, I'm in trouble. I'm in Mexico. I'm in a lot of trouble, Grandma. Who is this? Grandma, it's me. Someone punches him in the jaw and said, gets on the phone and says, your grandson's in a lot of trouble. You need to get, to a, you need to get money to us right away or bad things are going to happen to him kind of like a virtual kidnapping. All you can hear in the background is screaming or crying or yelling. They told her when she said it didn't sound like her grandson, that's because we broke his jaw. So this woman raced to the bank to get the money, to send the money. Thankfully, her daughter, the actual grandmother, called mom at that exact point. She stopped her from sending, I think she said $7,000 to save her grandson. We are still seeing it. They're just ramping it up a bit. We've, we're now terming it virtual kidnapping scam because they realized the grandparent scam was out there. We and every other agency had helped to get it out there to people. People were more knowledgeable. They realized how to protect themselves. But I can tell you if I received a call that my 23 year old had been assaulted in another, especially 
in, in another country where I don't, I don't know of it. That would be very traumatizing. I know my prefrontal cortex, my ability to think would shut down and I would just be on autopilot trying to save my family member. It happens, but we need to try to get that information out there, share that information so maybe we can think about it before we run off to send the money. Scammers are, are pretty evil. They, they're, you know, and, and they're always coming up with a new way to, to get to us. Our, our job isn't for doom and gloom, but we just want to share the information with you. Wow, that was powerful. I, ha I almost burst into tears when you told me that. Oh, it's devastating. And it's, it's heartbreaking for us because we, like in my office, we work with crime victims. We work through the criminal justice process. We're, through, we're there the entire time. In these cases, the FBI is doing everything that they can to, to catch these perpetrators, but it's, it's typically in another country. They only have so many resources. They're working on it continually to try and try and do more. But I think the best thing we have at this point is knowledge, just getting it out there to individuals, letting them know that it's happening. And that's that's the best thing we can do right now. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh -huh. So how about some questions from the audience? Anyone? Yes. It's not a question, it's something that happened to me yesterday. Somebody called and said, they're, they said uh, $399 will be taken out of your account. And I says, what? And they says, uh, that if I wanted to speak to somebody, that they'd give me, and they said, um, they gave me a phone number, and it started with, 935 9935 and they said that uh said I I could uh, that I had subscribed to something that totaled 399 now that's not counting taxes they told me and I says I did and I says I don't think so and they says well call this number if you have any questions I just hung up but you know I they left a message on the answer machine too. They called back again yeah. and left a message on our answer machine. So what should they do in that kind of situation? What would what yeah, so I do? called my bank. I tried calling my bank. <laughs> Make sure nothing would withdraw. No, 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 no. They were too busy. Your bank? Yes. <laughs> oh, so. I would, I would. Go into the manager's office and consider yeah. changing yeah. banks. So I, yeah. call, I yeah. called the main office and uh, they said that I had four numbers to pick out. If I pick one number, that will secure my account. Um, okay. Yeah. What? Yeah. What Chase. Is? Chase. I, I would have to go Chase. Chase. Yeah. So that's yeah. what I'm going <clears> to <throat> go fix today to make sure nobody takes any money out of my account. That may have been trying to get a security answer from her. You know how we all have those really? security answers uh, for oh, our accounts. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Or with Chase, it's always about their four, the four-digit pin, the four-digit pin number. Oh, okay. yes, yes, so, that's what they said. Okay, so when she said the four, I'm like, oh, sounds like my, my bank, because yeah. I bank with Chase too. <laughs> so they were always asking me, what's your four-digit pin? I'm like, mm. <laughs> type it in. Um, so when you when you do get those phone calls, um, the best thing to do is, is just if they're telling you that they're going to lock your account or they're going to withdraw money from your account, mm -hmm. what they're trying to do is they're trying to get you to verify your account information by providing them with your account number. Um, number one, don't accept that um, as far as what they're telling you that they're going to take money out of your account. If they have your account number, they have your account number. Don't make it easy for them and give it to them. It's number oh, one. Okay. Don't give them any account information. Don't verify anything over the phone. Um, if you're going to take money out, go right ahead and hang up. Immediately call your bank. Immediately call your bank. Talk to somebody about what just happened and verify that nothing's being attached to your account. Um, okay. And then I get calls from, uh, they'll say, this is Social Security. We're going to investigate something. Uh -huh. and I figure, you know, 
can I share one more thing about that? Because that was another scam I was tempted to talk about. We are hearing of so many calls from the Social Security Administration requesting information from you. No reputable agency, the IRS, Social Security, our local tax, they're not going to call to ask for your information. That is information they've given to us. Never give them that over the phone. They're going to contact you by registered mail if there is an issue. Yes. They're not going to contact you by phone. Another word of advice, no agency is ever going to ask you to pay by a gift card. We have had so many individuals that have lost money by paying by green dot money card, gift card, even their Best Buy card. Go into Best Buy, get get Best Buy gift cards with your credit card, call us, read off the number. It's never going to happen. They're going to ask for, you know, a credit card, probably not actually ever over the phone, but a check. Send us a check to make the payment. Always wait for a registered letter from them um, or contact them directly. Get the number to the Social Security Administration or to the IRS. Go into the local office. Don't don't give people information over the telephone. We can't stress that enough. <coughs> Keep in mind too that the I, the federal government, IRS, Social Security Administration office, they already have your information. They don't need you to tell them. Okay, they they're not calling you for to ask you to verify. They already know. They know exactly who you are and all your information. They, they will never call and ask. <laughs> yeah, they're the ones who provided it. So. so it's important to not feel embarrassed or stupid if this happens to you. I know we talked about that already. And I know sometimes we bring something up and everyone in the room laughs. Well, I've been in places before where everyone in the room laughs about things. And I'm in my seat going, oh my gosh, everybody knows that except me. And I feel like I'm the only person that doesn't have a brain that you know can absorb what I need to know so all of us deep down inside know that we're susceptible so it's there's nothing uh, embarrassing about letting law enforcement know that you've been scammed it's very important that they know and uh, if you ever have any questions you can call my office anytime and we're happy to help you filter it so I don't know about the rest of you do you, were there any other questions I, I have a quick question. Um, it's been a little while, but we had a client in Morro Bay, and it was, I thought when they first described to me the call that happened, I thought it was going to be a grandparent scam. But what they said was uh, they wanted the credit card information and because of money's owed or something like that. And she said no. So I was like, awesome, super proud. She said, uh, but she almost did anyways because they said, we have your address, and if you don't give it to me over the phone, I'm gonna come get it myself. And I said, don't, don't do it. Don't give them the information. And she said, well, I don't wanna just be here scared and worried. I would rather just give it to them and then deal with my bank later. And I'm like, nobody's, if they come to your house, we can have the police come. They're not going to do that. But there was a small part of me that doubted if I was correct and I don't know if you guys have seen that where they're making threats and even if they kind of think maybe it's a scam they they're afraid that that person's going to show up I and know. they do it anyways yeah it's usually they'll say um you know the sheriff is going to we're going to turn this over to law enforcement you have 24 hours until the sheriff will show up and you'll be arrested. Mm -hmm. And nobody gets arrested for owing money. It, it just, um, I mean, it doesn't, it, that doesn't happen. Um, so yeah, you're not gonna go to jail if you owe money, even if it is, which it, it isn't in those cases, cause those are, you know, those ones aren't legitimate. But, you know, we, we work with lots of debtors who do owe money and, um, you know, there's things that can happen, but it's not, you're not going to jail and law enforcement's not getting involved. I don't, so. I don't, in this particular case, she wasn't worried about law enforcement coming. She was worried about the criminal coming. Right. Uh -huh. So is that, was so, that a unique thing or is that happening? Uh, yeah, I haven't heard that one. I hear the law so, enforcement, but like you said, yeah. you can call the police if somebody shows up. So there was, I haven't really seen, but I, um, that particular scenario, I, I did speak to um, uh, a lady that came in a couple of weeks ago 
had come into the department. Um, some there was um, through Facebook. There's a group that she belonged to. Um, come to find out, it's a um, like a uh, adopt a pet rescue type type group on Facebook. And apparently, there's somebody out there that is using a scam of hey, I found your dog. They pulled the picture from the internet somewhere else. You know, hey, like you post a picture on the internet, it's there forever. Um, I lost my dog, anybody seen him? You know, and, they, and it circulates, right? Uh, word of mouth, friends through the groups and this and that. Well, somebody is trying to pull a scam of, hey, I found your dog, you need to give me $1,000, otherwise I'm gonna kill it. Um, that type of thing. So it's, these, are, these are all the types of scams that are preying on fear, intimidation, the things that pull at our heartstrings. <laughs> So what she was afraid, and what it did was it it, it kind of got worse by, if you you know, um, I know who you are. She turned them in. It was another family member of the scammer. Um, says I know where you live. I'm you know, and had her address, and said I'm coming after you, and legitimate fear. And I this is kind of where yeah. you're going, yeah. right? Yeah. What first thing she did as soon as that happened, she comes down to the police department. She screenshot everything off of Facebook the names and everything, and she filed a police report. Now, do we know who this person is? No, it's, a, um, it's, not, it's a non-existent person um, as far as the name goes. We can't tie it to anybody, it's out of county, all this kind of stuff. It doesn't negate the fact that they have their address. The problem is, is that when it comes to public records, everyone in this room, I'm gonna give you a website and I will have you go ahead on into this website and you can type in your own name and see what pops up. You will be astounded. Right in front of her, I've typed in her name and where she lived and it had her current phone number, her current address, everything, her relatives, friends, associates. So what I told her to do is basically, number one, do not live in fear, okay? Number two, I'm gonna document this so that way we have it on record and any, every law enforcement agency should be doing the same thing, I would hope. Um, document it, have it on record, and make a police report with as much information as possible so that, that way we can follow up if, if we can. Um, there are some databases searches that we can do to see if it comes back that that is a real person. Um, DMV web, uh, through DMV we can pull up pictures for driver's license and identification photos, that sort of thing. We do have some tools that we can use. It's not television, it's not CSI, so we're not gonna solve a case like that in 30 minutes. No, it doesn't happen, I'm sorry. Um, but we can follow up, we can do as much as we can to at least identify the person, maybe get the phone number, call them and tell them, and put them on notice. So we can do as much as we can, but definitely contact law enforcement, definitely make a report, definitely create an incident of that this is what happened. Um, one thing that P uh, PISMO does, we do extra patrol requests all the time. We keep doing drive-bys. Um, as far as the homeowner and the victim in this case, if you see somebody driving through your neighborhood that you don't recognize, that doesn't belong there, you know, be diligent about taking note of that. Feel free to call us. We'll come out, we'll check to see who's who in the neighborhood. If they don't belong, we'll run them out. That's not a problem for us. So, but the bottom line is don't live in fear. Absolutely do not let them prey upon your fears and live in fear. I love that, Anthony. Do not live in fear. You know, too many of our men and women have made the ultimate sacrifice so that we don't have to live in fear. So even though the criminals today are smart, we can outsmart them. Okay, so um, take this information. I don't know about you, but I feel more empowered today. I could use this information to feel empowered, not fearful, because um, you know your average criminal, even though they're smarter, there's still there are a lot of really stupid ones out there. And if we keep reporting, we keep reporting, somebody's going to trip up and they're going to catch the guy. Yes, Clarice. Um, you mentioned there was a website that we could go and check mm -hmm. out. Are you going to actually provide that today for us? I'm going to tell you right now. Okay, cool. I'm ready. Since you asked, <laughs> it's called Fast peoplesearch.com. So it's fast, F-A-S-T, people, P-E-O-P-L-E, -E, search, S-E-A-R-C-H. Is that better than the true people search that I use? 
the one I use. Yeah, dot com. True. Fast people search dot com. Anthony? All one word, no capitalized, no commas or anything in the middle. Is that better than the true people search? I find more people through fast people search than you can imagine. Um, I get so, for instance, I found a credit card um, or a, a, an ID card or something with a name and a city. Um, no address, no phone number, no nothing, just a name and a city. I put that information in there and I get the, some of the most accurate information you'll ever believe. So I went in there and I deleted all my information. Mm -hmm. You can do that. I, yeah, yes. I, I called a police officer. I said, your name's here, your wife's name's here, your age, your address, your email addresses, your every phone number you, you've ever had, you know. Some of the some of the other websites that are um, it basically what it does is it pulls information from public records everywhere on the internet and it just compiles. I mean, we all see those you know Travago and Expedia and Hotels.com where it's like a one-stop shop for you know hotel reservations, car, airline, you know all that kind of stuff. That's what these people searches are all about. They pull from public records and they just compile it in, in a database, and it's a one-stop shop. Right. It will even get family members on that list. It'll, it'll have family members, uh, former residents as part, it, 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 I think it categorizes them as possible associates because they've used that same address, you know, if, like if it's a rental property. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing what you'll find about yourself online. Sandy, did you have a question? Well, I had a, we almost fell for a scam. I thought people would, might want to hear about it. Sure. We had called, we had gotten a bill uh, from uh, DirecTV that was like 30 or 35 dollars something more than it had been so we called them and said do you have any um deals going on that we could you know lower and they said no not this time but maybe call them a month so the next very next day somebody called said they were from direct tv i don't know how they got this <laughs> knew that we had just done that but and they had this deal going on and if we did this and this and this and the gift card you, um another uh, part of their uh, direct TV so that they could um, we could verify this and so we took the number down but we didn't call that number we called direct TV they said we don't have anything like that going on but we could have fallen for it because we had called them the day before smart so mm -hmm. <laughs> smart <laughs> well you know real quick um, there's a few vendors in particular that may be legitimate but uh, they will come to your door and oftentimes sell you their services. You can check them out, they are legit. But you'll pay two, three times or more what you would normally need to, to pay for that type of service or, and, and a lot of times get an inferior product. And uh, those, um, there's four companies that came to mind this morning when I was thinking about it, roofing companies. A lot of times they're, you, they'll already be on your roof and they say, hey, we're here for your free roofing inspection. And they'll, you know, they, you've got some missing shingles you want us to, you know, and they'll, they'll just milk you real quick. Uh, termite and pest control companies, I can't tell you as realtors how many times we've listed a home and said your buyer's probably going to want a termite inspection report. Well, I've had Terminex forever or I've had you know um and that does not equate to a termite report um a lot of times uh certain companies aren't as thorough and they're going to charge you a lot more than if you just call someone call our office and we'll give you some names of some other companies you can at least compare the two big ones the last couple of years solar companies mm -hmm. and alarm companies um, Larry and I fell uh, victim to a uh, camera thing. It wasn't a scam because they were legitimate. <coughs> we had just been burglarized. I came home from work one day and was in the village, so we lived in a decent neighborhood. And there was a guy in my living room, you know, and he took off and and uh, and I took off. We both kind of went like that. <laughs> and um, so. You know, we were kind of chasing them down the street. My neighbors got involved, you know. My, one of my neighbors is an attorney. And he said, you know, you ought to get a camera system. I just got one. Well, they had come to his door. And I was thinking, well, he's an attorney, so he probably knows what he's talking about. So I call the guys, and I go, I want you. Get over here. And so we signed up for this contract. 
Two years later, we decided to sell the house and we're in this contract. So we called them about um, maybe putting it in the new house and but the buyer of our house was real savvy and he had his own alarm guy and that guy quickly pointed out to me that this that these people had sold us old cameras and that we could have gotten something so much better for thousands of dollars less and because, but because we're in a vulnerable state and feeling a little shaky you know we just wanted them installed plus i work full time and I just wanted it done so I could just keep moving. And so any of us are susceptible to these. I have another client a couple of <coughs> years ago. Uh, she had a solar company come by. My husband used to be in the solar business, stopped over one day when we were having an open house and he said, you know, those solar panels, they look kind of old. Well, they got her for $30,000 and put it as a lien on her property and this is all the money she had to live the rest of her life. We're trying to sell the house, and I told her, I said, nobody wants your lease, and this is going to be a lien against your property. It's going to come out of your equity. Well, uh, Don Ernst, an elder abuse attorney, got involved, and God bless him, at the 11th hour, he got that completely removed. But that's an exception. And we see people get hit with these solar um, contracts all the time. So be very, very careful <clears throat> about being too quick to sign up for anything. Call our office. We have vetted vendors that we can refer you to, that we trust. And just, just don't be too quick to sign on the dotted line. So don't answer your door, don't answer your phone, <laughs> and, and stay off the internet. Yeah. Yeah. But don't yeah. like saying yourself. Yeah. Yeah. No, just, just don't, yeah. you know, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's absolutely crazy. But we have to find a way to live our lives freely and in freedom and not cowering. And because when we live that way, then the bad guys win. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. But the, they'll tell you, you have to make the decision now. This mm -hmm. is the last, you know, you get a better deal, right? You have to make your decision now. So you feel pressure. And yeah. that's always a sign, I too. That's right. always what we right. say. Like, if, if they can't they wait, it now, then it's obviously today, not legitimate. You know? yeah. A reputable company will not right. put exactly. always pressure on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Um, in line with what you're talking about, I, I had an opportunity to speak with our county sheriff because they patrol in the area where I live. I see him a lot. And I saw him at the Native Garden and I wanted to be chatting with him. And I asked him about security. And his recommendations um, were uh, cameras, uh, a doorbell ringer. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, the ring doorbell. The ring camera camera. doorbell. Mm -hmm. And he said also, even if you don't have it, uh, maybe uh, posted signs, you know, uh, property protected by blah, blah, blah. Sure. He said you may not have it. But. And the other thing he said was uh, night lighting. Mm -hmm. That uh, he said just from my experience, if somebody is, uh, most of these burglaries he's, he opined were um, not thought out. They were this uh, spur of the moment kinds of things driving down the neighborhood. And he said, the reality of it is if there's a house that's dark and has easy access, that's what they're going to go after. Leave your porch light on at night. That's just something very simple that you can do. Uh, a bad guy is less likely to approach your house that's well lit than the guy three doors down that's all dark. It just makes sense. So common sense does still prevail. <laughs> you know, we... Um one of the things that we've noticed in law enforcement in the last couple, in the last year and a half um, is a lot of property crimes, you know, thefts from vehicles. Um, you know, back in the day, you could live in the neighborhood and never lock your doors or windows at night, right? You could leave your car doors unlocked all night and never have a problem. What is happening now is that criminals are out there, they're roaming around and using the cover of night and the cover of darkness to sneak around, they check door handles on the cars and they see what's unlocked. Um, they have kind of removed themselves from breaking windows and actually breaking into cars because they're not wanting to draw attention to themselves. So 
locking your doors, they check the door handle, see that it's locked, they move on to the next one. It's called the path of least resistance. That's what they're looking for. If you make it easy for them, they're gonna take advantage. Um, their chances are they're not gonna break a window because they don't wanna draw attention. Um, so the lighting equipment's very, very important. Um, you know, if they see that there's a porch light on, you know, that can kind of go either way. It's one of those things that, hey, did we leave the porch light on overnight because nobody's home? Because that's kind of the tradition that we've kind of fallen under. Um, but what's really good is you can find these floodlights, LED floodlights. I have them on my garage and I have them on my front door. Every time the wind blows, the branch blows, it moves around and it sets off that 3000 lumen light on my porch or my driveway, which is great. I love it because the bobcat or the mountain lion that came down from the mountain the other night got scared away because the light went off. You know, so those are, those are things that, you know, they're motion activated, they're very cheap, you know, they're inexpensive, they're very easy to put up, not really a big deal. Video cameras, always great to have for evidence. Um, maybe, you know, you want to spend the extra money for them. One problem with video cameras is night vision. They don't have night vision unless you're paying extra thousands of dollars for that. They're not that clear, they're not that great, but it does capture what happened. Um, daytime, much, much better, much clearer, works a lot better. The signage as far as you know, house under video surveillance or monitored by video surveillance, those are great deterrents. All of these are great deterrents. One of the one of my neighbors has a sign in my in the window. What does it say about the surveillance? Because Forget the camera. Beware the yeah. three fifty seven. <laughs> <laughs> That's my house. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. Another thing is get to know your neighbors. A socially strong neighborhood is a safer neighborhood. So um, I know I'm kind of a loner. I like to withdraw when I get home. You'd think I was an outgoing person but in my natural state I'm actually very private and a little actually a little bit shy but it is I think important to just know your neighbors enough so if you see something or they see something a little unusual going on over at your house that they'll be moved to pick up the phone and check and make sure you're okay or even call the police uh, because something looks like some plenty's going on I just had my brother's car. He went to the Oban Festival not too long ago. He parked right in front of it. He went out to his car. His car was gone. His car got stolen. Wow. And so we called the center of police. We're not there. I asked him, I said, well, do you think they broke a window? They shimmied it or what? And they said, no, they can activate they have thieves have a way of activating your car if you have just the little you know the yeah, remote your remote mm -hmm. so it took two days but um we really didn't think he'd ever get his car back um they found his car two blocks away on the other side of the fence mm -hmm. i was just and nothing was broke nothing was taken um to me, I believe that they opened up the glove department and seen his retirement badge from law enforcement and realized they stole the wrong car. Strange <laughs> <laughs> things have happened. I know. Um, that was, he was very fortunate to get his car back all intact. Thank you. I wanted to ask you guys, um, I've been a caregiver and I also had an elderly neighbor and they both did the same thing they you know you get mail with your name and address on it and they would meticulously cut that name and address out or just take the whole envelope and not put it in the recycle you know they would have to shred it because it has their personal information on it but your name and address is not a secret is it I mean is that are they preventing something by being so we would so suggest shredding all mail, especially any type Maybe of that mail is. that's asking for a credit, um, anything with your personal information. That's one of the tips that we say is. is what about just the envelope? I mean, just it's always. And that's on the probably their envelope. personal preference. They didn't want anybody to know 
their yeah. information, but this day and age shred it all That's before you before you get yeah. rid of it. Anything uh, with names, phone numbers, addresses, yeah. any yeah. kind of information, you don't like, want to give it to anybody, put it in the trash can. Well, and that's another thing that this day and age, and it's it's really sad to say, but it's really important to have a lock, either a locking mailbox, an MBU, which is the type that you open with a key, or just get a PO box because we have so many mail theft cases where people just go along and at night they pull pull your mail out of the mailbox and then they have all of your personal information. Um, we have cases come in regularly that have 125 victims on there that have no idea that they've even been victimized, but it's because some drug addict has been found in a hotel room with just piles of individuals' mail, whether it's their new driver's license, their checkbook, mm -hmm. their, you know, regardless of what it is. So two things, locking mailbox is very important and shred all of your incoming mm -hmm. Some of the banks have now started doing on your mail statements. If you get statements by mail, they only use the last four digits of your account number mm -hmm. for, for that reason. And I think that's uh, you yeah. know, they're starting to get more security oriented because there are people out there raiding mailboxes nonstop. But like he said, sometimes they can get your information get right off the right. internet. Yeah. But there's no sense giving them any more opportunities no. than necessary. You know, Keep yourself. So lots of them are like teenagers. They can do something with just your name and address. Yes. So that, that's well, a, they mix it with the other information they're well, gathering from other sources. Right. That's so that's the thing is is it's kind of like when you when you investigate anything, you get a little piece of information here, you get a little piece of information up. from here, it, and it starts to add up, and it becomes a, a larger picture. It's almost a paint by numbers, really. Mm -hmm. I get a number from here, a number from mm -hmm. there, and it's now you start putting it all together. So I think the the important thing is is if you don't want something, if something's got like credit card applications or anything like that, shred that stuff. Rip it up and if you don't want to invest in a shredder, just start ripping it up, cutting it up, whatever you need to do. Burn it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of our senior agencies, um, senior centers will have like shred days or other agencies mm -hmm. have shred days available they, yeah. that you can actually go in and have your property shredded. Although shredders, especially crisscross shredders, what we suggest, um, they're not that expensive anymore. You go down to Home Depot, Walmart, Costco. Target, Costco. Yeah. It's, you know, 30, 40 bucks. And mm -hmm. it's definitely well worth it if you've ever had your information compromised. Make sure it's the cross shredder though. Yeah. Too. Because the ones that go on strips, you can actually put them back together if somebody's really that meticulous yeah. and wants to do it. They can, but the cross shredder, it's, it comes out in confet like confetti. Yeah. It's almost impossible to put it back together. Can you imagine sitting there and putting all of them? <laughs> I actually saw a movie where they did that very thing and they started putting them together. Yeah. Wow. It was so weird. But did they have a whole bucket full? I mean, that's a little OCD. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I got homework to do. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, well, I want to thank all of you for coming today. You've been a, I hope you think that this was a wonderful resource for you to help you stay safe. My hope today is that you'll use me as a future resource uh, and um, because not only do I have your uh, people like these to draw from, but I also have electricians, plumbers, handymen, senior in-home care, senior communities. Uh, we have relationships with people that can help you with your Medicare and uh, so much more. And our vendors are people who we trust. And so it doesn't hurt to give us a call. We're not gonna make you sell your home, we promise. Just because we're realtors, we care about you. This is our labor of love, giving back. I've been in business for 40 years and I wanted to do something more meaningful and that's how we started Seco Seniors. Mm -hmm. And uh, before I forget, I wanna introduce Bailey, my uh, Bailey Pewter my business partner bailey is responsible for putting these seminars together and without her none of us could be here <laughs> and please forgive me i should have said in the beginning that we do videotape these seminars and the reason for that is because we do have a lot of elderly people who can't come and this gives them an opportunity to watch the video 
So if any of you feel uncomfortable with that, uh, or if you're hiding from the law, or, or <laughs> you know, have a particular reason why you don't want to be videotaped, let Kevin know and we'll make sure that you're not in it, okay? So please remember as you continue to stay in your home, if you have a friend or neighbor who does need to sell their home, our hope is that you give us a call and we'll reach out to them and help them in every way, any way that we can. And on the table we have, on the back table, we have a schedule of events or you can just call our office to register. Um, did I cover everything? Is that everything? The most important part is the raffle. That's right. That's right. So Does everybody have a ticket? Step. You need one? Agnes <coughs> needs one? Yes. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Let me get you one more. Okay, everybody's got a raffle ticket. Oh, do you Why don't we have one need draw? Last three numbers are 581. Agnes 1. We have one more. Two more. Two more. Two more. Oh my God. Agnes 1 the Moose Munch from Harry and David, everybody's favorite. Very good. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Why don't you draw the next one? Oh. Okay. Number 582. Oh, right here. Right there. Sandra won. You get the big basket from Guild Mortgage. Nice. Yeah, Guild Mortgage, who also does reverse mortgages. If anyone has uh, plans to check into one of those, she does refinance and she's great. Mm -hmm. Last one is for a gift certificate to Coco's Restaurant. Anthony, you want to go? Five eight seven. Oh, I got it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, so there are refreshments over here that have been hard to touch. So please stuff your pockets, come in, we'll have some, and thank you all for coming. And if you have questions for any of us, we'll be here for a while. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.